Now, instead of actually using a third party tool like Postman or some other party, uh, <laughs> hello everyone, what's up, and welcome back to Hello Mendix. My name is Ryan Mocky, and today I'm going to be covering how we can consume and publish REST APIs in Mendix Studio Pro. Application programming interfaces or APIs have become the standard way we get two systems to communicate on today's web. Most APIs you encounter will follow a set of rules known as representational state transfer or REST for short. Now, this video isn't going to unpack what REST is, instead I'm going to focus on the practical steps to actually publish and consume an API in Mendix. For this example, I'm going to be publishing a REST API which shares images in one Mendix app and then consuming it in another. Okay, let's go. The first thing we're going to need in our app which publishes the API is an entity to store the image. Here in my domain model, I have an entity called gallery image, which has a caption and a key for the API. It also inherits from system.image, which means it can store and hold images in our database. Now on my homepage, I have a simple user interface, which is set up to allow the user to upload images into that entity. We can then display them down below in the list view. This is what it looks like at the moment. So let's go back to our domain model and generates our API. We simply have to click on our entity, right click and say expose as a REST resource. We then need to select our service, which I will do so now. In my first module, I have a folder called publish REST. I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call this gallery. I'm then going to leave the operations as get and get by key and click OK. Remember, you can do this all manually if you want from scratch. At this point, we can run our app and test it out. I've already taken the time to upload some test images so we can have some data to work with. Now that our app is running, we can actually test out our API. Now, instead of using some external tool like Postman or some other set, we can actually just use our app Swagger page. Now, this is part of every Mendix app which publishes an API. So to access the Swagger page for your service, you can simply click this blue link next to location. This is going to open up a page in your browser with all the specifics of the services published in your app, along with a playground for you to try it out. Now, if we want to test this, this one expects the key for the API because this is the get by key. So I'm just going to hit in a number here. Uh, the keys are over here. So I'll just put it in six. Now you can see we have a successful response 200, uh, but the body says unrecognized response type unable to display. And if we wait for a second, we'll actually see it display something, um, but it's just an encrypted string. We have to say wait and give it some time. So here you can see the browser is displaying the file as a raw binary file. So you can see it understands that there's a PNG involved, but that's embedded in the image. So what's happening here? Mendix by default sends images as binary files. These files need to be associated with the type before the browser can interpret them. So we can do this change manually by going and editing the service in Mendix Studio Pro. We're going to select the get gallery image by key and we can say show. So this is the microflow which handles that endpoint. In order to get the browser to interpret our image as an image, we need to add the content type header to it. So we can do that just by inserting an activity here to create an object. Then we're going to create the uh, HTTP header. And we're going to give it some value. So under member uh, key, we're going to provide it the content dash type field. And then under value, we're going to enter image slash png. And then finally, we need to link this to our HTTP response. And we can do that just by association. Now, if I rerun this app and go back to the Swagger page, we should see the image render correctly. Okay, so now that it's running, we can go back to our Swagger page, reload it, and then we can try it out again. 
I'm going to enter five and click reduce. There we can see the image has loaded correctly. So at this point, our API is working. It's been tested. We can now try and consume this in another app. So I have another separate app over here. Uh, this is a completely different app, which is also running at the same time. And we do that by configuring different port numbers. Um, you can go into your settings and configure a uh, runtime port, but I'm not going to go into specifics of that now. So what is in this app? Well, we just have a simple page set up for the user to enter the image key, and then they can actually call the button get images from API. Um, if we go into this, we actually have to integrate the API over here. So I'm just going to start off by adding a activity. I'm going to call a rest service. Now that service is going to have a location and that can come directly from our other app. So if we go back here and open this up, we can just copy that whole thing as it is and paste it over here. So we need a key for the API. So I'm going to replace that with the proper placeholder. And now the key is going to be coming from our UI. So it's be going to be coming from this field over here, which we have as a parameter in our microflow. So I'm going to open this up again, and we're going to give this the request holder slash image key. We're going to leave this as a get because it's still a get. It's just a single get for a single object. We don't need to have any headers on the request side. Um, and it also doesn't have a request body because it is a get method. Finally, for the response, we do need to do some configurations. So for the response handling, we want to uh, store in a file document. Uh, we want to set store in a variable to yes, and then we need to choose our entity that this is going to be stored in. So I have one in my domain model called image from API. And if I select that, give it a proper name, it should work. Now we should also commit this to make sure it's stored in our database. So now I can run my app and test everything out one last time. So here we have our app. The site is where we're publishing and the site is where we're consuming. And if we enter a number on this side, uh, so let's go for three. We can see it loads there. Now we can do one more really cool thing with REST APIs and images. Basically, we don't even need to call this API in order to display it in your page. So I'm going to show you what I mean, and we can just do it quickly. I'm going to go to the home web page and over here I'm going to look for in the toolbox. I'm just going to search for image. Now we don't want the static or dynamic image. We want just the pure image entity. So I'm going to drag this in. And then if we open it up, uh, it has a very cool property. We can actually select to display an image from a URL. So that URL is going to correspond to the one we use on our service. So we can just paste in, I need to go copy it. So I'm just gonna grab it from here. So we can paste it in here. And then same as before, we can use a parameter, which is going to be the exact same value. And that is going to be the image key. So now when I run my app, you'll see the second I enter a value here, it's going to load the image. So let's just see, we can do uh, four and the image immediately loads. And if we change that up, we can do uh, six image loads. And if we do two image loads, which is really cool. And that's everything you need to know about publishing and consuming REST APIs and images in Mendix. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky, and this is Hello Mendix.